again YouTube it's been a while since I've posted a video things have been rather busy with work now that classes are back there's a lot to organize for teaching and just generally settling into the end of summer but here we are on a late September day with a current temperature of 23 degrees Celsius which is always nice the weather forecast actually looks pretty good we um, should have some good sunny days ahead well into October which means more riding the day will come around the end of October the sad day when the bike has to be winterized and tucked away for a few months but we will worry about that when the time comes so right now I am actually on my way to do a little bit of practicing in a parking lot I've been doing a lot of that lately and it's part of the topic of what I just wanted to chat about while I'm on my way there I'm nearing the end of my third season riding started riding in May 2020 so almost two and a half years by the calendar and in that time I have put on about 31,000 kilometers on my 2019 MT-07. I ride a lot and a lot of those kilometers will have come from the two big trips that I made out to the west coast this summer and then the summer before. And I did a bit of a review on the motorcycle and how it handled those trips so I won't go over that again but the point is I've got a little bit of riding under my belt although I still consider myself to be a new rider so because of that I like to practice a lot and I have really glommed on to the drills that Moto Jitsu has outlined in his belt system. I have found them to be incredibly helpful. And there was one particular video that really stood out with me recently. I've done a fair bit of drills with U-turns, figure eights, and some of the configurations that Greg has come up with. In fact, I'm going to do one of those later. And I've developed, I think, a pretty good feel for how the motorcycle will handle in those drills. But what I did recently was followed some advice in one of his videos where he talked about doing U-turns and, and small circles with various combinations of using the clutch, the rear brake, the lean, the speed, and those sorts of things. So one day I decided, let's see if I can do this without using the clutch at all, or the rear brake, which for my bike meant a speed of about 15 kilometers per hour. And I was a little nervous about that because of the speed. And so I tried some very large U-turns, like within three parking spaces, and got to be able to counter lean. And so I've got a good lean angle on the bike. And then what I found when I had that figured out, that turning within two parking spaces became way more comfortable. And it really built up my confidence. And I guess that's because I didn't have to think about not pulling in the clutch if I got anxious about something because that's the sure way to dump your bike. So the bike was delivering constant power. 
and I found it very smooth for doing those sharp U-turns. And I go back to using the clutch as well, but now I've got a much better feel for how much I can lean the bike when I'm doing those maneuvers. And it makes it a lot more fun. And it really does translate over to riding the motorcycle in the city as well. Because I have a better feel for when I'm going around a, a, a curve or a sharp corner or something like that. Like this one here. And what it's done is it's made me comfortable by being what was outside my comfort zone. And so because of that, my comfort zone is shifting. If I went back two years ago when I took the course to get my learner's license, doing a U-turn within about 30 feet was very daunting and very difficult because I didn't have any idea how to lean the bike. And now, I am totally comfortable doing it within about 18 feet. And that just comes with practice. So as Greg says, shut up and practice. Well, I did shut up and I did practice. And it really pays off. He also had a video out there about not practicing for too long at a period of time. And that makes total sense to me. In my line of work, I teach about things that are related to learning and memory. I'm a neurobiologist, and so I understand the concepts behind it. And I know that when you practice something, that the amount of practice at the time is helping to get you to learn that particular task, but it's the time in between. And it's the time in between that does what we do consolidates, sorry, consolidates the memory. And that transfers over to my musical interests as well. When I'm practicing a tune on the bagpipes, I can't practice it for hours at a time. Do a little bit here and there. 15 minutes here and there makes a big difference. But then I can practice it for a while and then I go away and I come back a day or even a couple of days later and it seems to be better. So I know that taking the time in between helps to consolidate those memories. And when it comes to skills on the motorcycle, it helps develop that muscle memory. And I actually know it's related to strengthening of synapses to the muscles from the nervous system. So I have some idea of how it actually works. And now empirical evidence that it actually does work. That being said, there's still a lot I have to learn. And I'm very anxious to try to learn. What I would love to do is take an advanced course. I watch these videos about people doing all these different courses and all the different uh, setups they have and I get very jealous because where I live those are few and far between. I inquired about an advanced course from the people where I took my basic course from and there really wasn't much of a motivation to do it. But I have heard that there is a provincial safety council, the Saskatchewan Safety Council, that does have an advanced rider course. It was not in this city, but I understand that now they will be bringing it to our city. My plan then is to take this course the next riding season. I don't think they have it offered anymore this season, but I'm going to jump at the chance to take it next season because as much as I think I'm improving, I know, always know I could improve more. And I would really like to be in the presence of some very experienced 
instructors to help point out what I'm not doing right, but also what I am doing right. With the whole goal of being a better and safer rider. I'm lucky so far, I haven't had any incidents. I ride within my limits. Given the age that I am, that's not a difficult thing to do. I've got a bit of experience of trying new things, and I know that with patience will come improvement and success. That being said, I do like to push myself outside of my comfort zone. And I'm constantly doing that. One of the things I haven't quite done yet, but I will be trying sometime soon, is to do these circles in a full lock of the handlebars. Greg just put out a video the other day about doing a 14 foot circle on his BMW. And I'm thinking, well, you know, geometrically, this little MT-07 should be able to do that. It's just a matter of if I have the skill to do it. We shall see. With all that in mind, pushing myself outside of my comfort zone, and now having ridden for two and a half years, I have the feeling that I think most new riders get after a period of time. I want another bike. I want a second bike. I want to keep this MT-07 because it is so much fun in the city. It's good for long trips. I can make it work on long trips. One of the issues is that my aging joints are not as comfortable. Mostly my knees. So I'm looking for something that's a bit bigger bit more comfortable for touring and I'm leaning towards an adventure bike because I'd like to be able to do some camping with it I don't want to do serious technical off-roading but I would like to go off the beaten path a little bit off of the paved roads so that I can do some camping in some more remote areas and with that I've been looking at reviews of different ADV bikes. I'm contemplating a larger one. I'm, I'm seriously contemplating the Yamaha Super Tenere, if I could get it. One of the main reasons is the price relative to its competitors. It's quite a bit lower priced. Another reason is what I've heard is the reliability of it. I certainly know from this MT-07 it's a very reliable machine. The third thing is it has a shaft drive, which for long trips would be really nice. I, I, you know, doing a clean, you know, doing a chain cleaning isn't too bad. It would be nice not to have to when you're traveling. And the shaft drive is kind of a selling point for me. And the reviews I've seen say that that shaft drive is pretty reliable. In the meantime, I have been out riding with a group of riders, and that's helped me as well because you get to talk about things, get different opinions, I see different bikes, and, and uh, there's certainly lots of discussion about technique and those sorts of things. I am trying, though, to convince these guys to come out and do a parking lot course. I've gone out a few times and set up a whole course with chalk lines and pylons and all that kind of stuff and I don't get a lot of uptake I've had a couple of people come out and they enjoy it it would be nice to have a day with everybody to come out and just do some drills and have some fun doing it I suspect that some people who are riding big bikes for years may be a bit nervous about that because maybe they don't do it very often and that's fine, but that's part of the fun, is to figure that out. Maybe if I do the advanced course next season, 
I will have some insights to help motivate others to come to it. One of the other riders in the group who is actually a colleague of mine at work is very interested in doing that. He's come out a couple of times doing some drills and seemed to enjoy it. But it is still fun to go out with these guys. What we've developed is a, a bit of a routine where we go for a ride and we end up at a small town outside the city and check out the local bar. I don't drink alcohol though because I'm on a graduated program with zero alcohol tolerance and plus I will never be one to drink and ride. I just don't think it's a very good idea. But we go to these bars and they've got good food. Discovered a really nice Cajun restaurant the other week that will be a go-to place for a while. And just the camaraderie of having fun. They're good people. And we get to talk a lot about the things that interest us because we all have the common interest. So I'm not sure if it'll be next year that I get a larger bike. Might be the year after, depends. Uh, one of the things I have to do is wait until August 5th of 2023 to get off my graduated license program. And that will then allow me to do test rides because a lot of the dealers around here won't give you a test ride unless you have your full motorcycle endorsement which is fine. Though I am itching to try other bikes now. Next August I'll try to do that and it might give me a sense of what I might really be interested in. And the other thing is I want to save some money to be able to get this. I don't want to have to finance it. I just want to be able to buy it outright. And then I don't have to worry about it. It will be tricky to insure two motorcycles because the province of Saskatchewan in its dislike for motorcycles has some of the highest insurance rates in the country and because it's a government-run insurance it's a monopoly and there's no competition so you don't have much choice Though my insurance will go down when I get off my graduated program because I have a lot of points from my driving record that are in the positive and that will reduce my, my rates. And what I'd like to do with a larger bike is go on a long trip again but maybe go some different places. Go down some gravel roads. Explore more things. The trips out to the west coast and to the mountains was great. I'd also like to try going north here in Saskatchewan because there are some nice areas up there. One of the things about this province is even though it is technically the prairies, that's only the bottom third of the province. The top two-thirds of the province is beautiful boreal forest with a lot of lakes and a lot of beautiful countryside with a low population density, ripe for some adventure riding, although I don't really know what adventure riding is. Maybe it's whatever you make it. And if I do that, I might look at upgrading my motor vlogging setup. I might look at a 360 degree camera, perhaps even a drone. But the other thing I've discovered with this motor vlogging is how much time it takes. I have some 
good software for editing. I use Final Cut Pro, which is a very powerful video editing tool, but it still takes a long time, and I'm still learning a lot. Part of it is to know what you want to say before you start talking, because otherwise you just ramble on and on and on. And I start to sound like when I'm giving my lectures. And nobody wants to hear that. The other thing though is with more equipment comes more attention. And I've been having some issues with the setup I got now, this remote control for the GoPro. Seems to be a little finicky as to whether it wants to connect to the camera or not. Which makes it difficult, because the thing I like about it when it works is I control the camera with just my, my thumb. But when it doesn't work, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Although I do like technology. Also hoping, speaking of the technology, that I got the camera settings right this time. Last time I had it set up and I didn't have that on an automatic shutter and the shutter was open way too much and everything was completely washed out and saturated and there's just no way to correct for that. So that was about an hour and a half of wasted video. So hopefully this one will be better. I'll know as soon as I go to look at it. But before I do all that, it's time to top up with fuel and then go and take care of these drills. So thanks for watching and we'll see you a little later. Take care and safe riding.